Hello everyone. We are going to start a new session on MySQL database. And in this, we will be covering the below topics. This topics, which is overview of MySQL, the database versions till now of MySQL, what are the editions of MySQL, the MySQL client server architecture, popular storage engines, MySQL server logs, MySQL socket file, InnoDB table spaces, MySQL database schemas, the new features which are included in MySQL 8.0 and will be covered in practical sessions on MySQL installation, MySQL backup, replication and upgradation. These are not possible in a single session. So we will be dividing the topics into multiple sessions. So let us proceed. So what is a MySQL database? MySQL is an open source relational database management system based on SQL structure, which is structured query language. The application is used for a wide range of purposes, including data warehousing, e-commerce and login application. So what is open source? Open source means that it is possible for anyone to use and modify the software. Anybody can download the MySQL software from the internet and use it without paying anything. But if you wish, you may study the source code and change it to suit your names. And most of the social media platforms run on MySQL database. It is developed, distributed and supported by Oracle Corporation. MySQL is an integral part of all major organization including popular internet organizations such as I said the social media platforms which are Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram and Wikipedia. In fact, MySQL has a market share of 42% in the relational database market. So it comes second, the top being Oracle. So why should we use MySQL? This is because of its compatibility, easy to use, data organization and open source environment. So with respect to compatibility, MySQL was originally designed to ensure maximum compatibility. This includes not only web services and other applications, but several other technologies and architectures. The relational database system is widely compatible and runs on all major operating systems, including Unix based operating systems such as Mac OS and Windows. It is easy to use. The tabular model of MySQL allows for an easy to use experience despite the relational nature of the databases and their storage structure. From installation to database server configuration of workloads, we can implement it easily. The variety of data structures that MySQL uses include standard data types such as numeric, date, time, alphanumeric, and more advanced data types such as JSON. Data organization. Because MySQL is a relational database, it stands out from other database management systems since the data is stored in an organized set of individual tables. Like Unlike other databases where the database data is often unstructured, this simple process of organizing the data optimizes data processing in processes such as data retrieval, updating information, and even indices establishing the relational between two different tables. And next is open source environment. So coming to why we started this whole conversation, being a popular open source database product makes MySQL a relied upon solution for major organization. And being open source, it allows any individual or enterprise unrestricted use of the MySQL code base, enabling them to modify, publish, and expand. So these are the database versions of MySQL. Five point, there were many other versions from MySQL 3, but I'm including these versions, MySQL 5, 5.5, 5.6, 7, and MySQL 8. So you can see in here the description, this version contains the release from 5.0 to 5.1.73. 5.5 contains the versions from 5.5 to 5.5.62. And you can see the release date over here and the end of support. So MySQL 
6.7 for this the end of support is October 2023. That's why most of us are right now upgrading from 5.7 to 8 version. And this contains the version from 5.7 to 5.6.27. And MySQL 8 contains, it is right now, it has been increased to 8.0.23. So these are the versions right now. Next is editions. It has two editions. One is open source community edition and the other is enterprise edition. So in open source, being an open source product, MySQL offers the MySQL community server that is freely available on over 20 platforms that includes Windows, Linux, Unix, Mac OS and many more. So multiple storage engines offered in the community, we will come to know, we will be proceeding with our, what are the storage engines, but there are multiple storage engines which are offered in the community edition which includes InnoDB, MyISM, Memory, Network Database, NDB. The databases are also modeled, developed and administered by the Oracle MySQL Workbench Community Tool. The community editions uses the general public license that allows the user to access and modify the source code. And the updated source code can be distributed as a part of the tool. So when using the community edition, you as a user of the version must understand and adhere to the terms and conditions of the general public license, which is GPL also we say. So if you are embedding the community ed edition in your application, the source will have to be made available under the general public license. And this is exactly the reason you need to ensure that you understand the term. Oracle also offers a cluster edition, which is a variation of the community edition and is also freely available. And the generally available cluster edition offers the same basic features as the community edition, but adds a distributed multi-master architecture. This enables the scalability of MySQL across multiple systems and ensures fault tolerance. And with respect to MySQL Enterprise Edition, if you have the need to for the latest features and 24 cross 7 support from Oracle, the MySQL Enterprise Edition is the best approach you can go ahead with. And the Enterprise Edition is built on the standard edition of MySQL. Next comes MySQL Client Server Architecture. So that architecture of MySQL contains the following layers, which is first is this client, next is server. And that last is the storage layer. So the client layer. This layer is the topmost layer in this, as you can see in here. And the client gives request instructions to the server with the help of this client layer. And the client makes request through command prompt or through GUI screen using valid MySQL command and expression. And if these expressions and the commands are valid, then the output is obtained on the screen. And some important services of client layer are connection handling, authentication, and security. Where in connection handling, the default port is 3306. Next comes the server layer. MySQL server is a central program that manages the database contents. So this is the server layer. And in here, MySQL D is the MySQL server process. It will listen to the incoming server requests. The, and this second layer of MySQL architecture is responsible for all logical functionalities of relational database management system of MySQL. And this is the this layer we can also tell as the brain of MySQL architecture. When the client gives request instructions to the server and the server gives the output as soon as the instruction is matched. There are various sub-components of MySQL server. They are thread handling. When a client sends a request to the server and the server will accept that request, then only the client is connected. And when client is connected to the server at that time, a client gets its own thread for its connection. And this thread is provided by thread handling of server. Also, the queries of client side, which is executed by the thread, is also handled by thread handling module. 
Next comes the parser. The parser, as the name indicates, is a type of software component that built a data structure, parse tree of a given input. So before parsing, lexical analysis is done. That is, input is broken into number of tokens. After the data is available in the smaller elements, parser performs syntax analysis. So it validates the query's syntax and semantics and converts it into a standard form. Next is authorization. This verifies that the connected user is allowed to run the query and has enough permissions on the object the query refers to. Next comes the optimizer. As soon as the parsing is done, various types of optimization techniques are applied at the optimizer block. These techniques may include rewriting the query, order of scanning of tables, and choosing the right indexes to use, and creates an optimal execution plan for each query. And this also involves deciding which indexes to use and in which order to process the table. Next is, see you can see in here, this diagram which is shown in here, this is the way the SQL is processed. So what's happening here? Parsing, th parsing, then authorization, then optimizing, then execution. So in execution comes query caching, buffer cache, and query execution. So the query cache, this stores the complete result set for inputted query set. MySQL server consult query cache. When client writes a query, if the query written by the client is identical in the cache, then the server simply skip the parsing, optimization and even execution. It just simply displays the output. This is like your library cache which you get in your Oracle. Next comes the storage layer. So this storage engine layer of MySQL architecture makes it unique and most preferable for developers. Due to this, MySQL is counted as the mostly used RDBMS and is widely used. In MySQL server, for different situations and requirements, different type of storage engines are used, which can be UnoDB, MyISM, Memory, or NDB. These storage engines are used as pluggable storage engines where tables created by users are plugged with them. So popular storage engines. Here we will be discussing about the popular storage engines which are InnoDB and MyISM. Apart from that we have, we do have many other storage engines like Memory, NDB and many more we have. But in this session, in, in our session we will be speaking about InnoDB and MyISM. So storage engines, what is storage engine? These are the server components that act as handlers for different table types. So MySQL delegates the task of handling data rows to these storage engines, which stores the data on disk, memory, or other components on the network and provide indexes and other row optimization. Storage engines are MySQL components that handle the SQL operations for different tables. The two major types of table storage engines are InnoDB and MyISM as I told and to determine which storage engines your server supports you can fire the command show engines in there you will be getting the result we will show you in our practical session how it's displayed the value in the support column column indicates whether an engine can be used so it should be yes no or default from which you need to know that whether it is available, not available, or available and currently set as the default storage engine. Next comes MyISM. So let us discuss a bit about MyISM storage engine. So MyISM manages the non-transactional tables. It provides high speed storage and retrieval as well as full text searching capability. These tables have a small footprint. Table level locking limits the performance in read write workload. So it is often used in read only or read mostly workload in web and data warehousing. And this MyISM 
is supported in all MySQL versions and is was the default storage engine until 5.4 version after which comes the InnoDB which is the default engine version from 5.5. So InnoDB is a transition safe asset compliance storage engine for MySQL that has commit rollback and crash recovery capabilities to protect user data. InnoDB row level lock-in and Oracle style consistent non-lock-in reads increase multi-user concurrency and performance. InnoDB stores user data in clustered indexes to reduce the overall I.O. for common queries on primary key and to maintain the data integrity InnoDB also supports foreign key referential integrity. The main difference of MyISM and InnoDB you can see in this chart. So as you can see here InnoDB is a new engine and MyISM my was an old one is an old one. MyISM does not support transactions by tables whereas InnoDB does support. There are no possibility of row level locking relational integrity in my ISM but with InnoDB this is possible. My ISM has stable level lock. So InnoDB has row level lock-in whereas my ISM has stable level lock. InnoDB does not support full text index whereas my ISM supports full text search index. InnoDB is better option while you are dealing with larger database because it supports transaction volume while my ISM is suitable for small project. As InnoDB supports this row level locking which means inserting and updating is much faster as compared with my ISM. This is a general thing. If row level locking is there then it will be supported. Other stable level locking it will be such in the full table. InnoDB supports acid which is atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability. So InnoDB supports acid property whereas my ISM does not support this acid property. This is non-acid compliant and non-transaction. My ISM does not support foreign key referential integrity constraints, constraints whereas InnoDB supports them. So we will be concluding our session in here. From our next session we will be seeing about MySQL server logs MySQL socket files, InnoDB table spaces, and MySQL database schemas, as well as the new features in MySQL 8 version. So stay tuned, do like, subscribe, and share, and also comment if you find this session helpful. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Take care.